Hi, and welcome to the show. Subscribe at kevinemdy.com slash podcast. Get CME for this episode by clicking on the CME link in the show notes. Today, we welcome Daniela Valenti. She's a psychiatrist, and we're going to talk about her book, Sentinel 10, The Edge of Destiny. Daniela, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Very excited to be here. So we'll talk about your book in a little bit. Just first off, briefly share your story and journey. So I went to McGill from a medical school, McGill in Montreal, Canada. So I am a Canadian psychiatrist practicing uh, right now in my office here in Ontario. So after McGill, I did my residency at uh, Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario. And so I graduated in 2015. So I've been practicing since 2015, mostly doing inpatient psychiatry, in fact. So yeah, that's that's uh, one of my passions. So the other part, of course, the, the writing endeavors. I started to write early on, like as most writers, like in my childhood, I never really had, obviously, you know, it's just kind of fun practice. I never had any kind of story at all until, until I hit on this idea of, well, Sentinel-10, basically this paranormal fiction. The very first idea for it came in my early 20s, in fact, to be honest, a little bit inspired, like I was whatever, 21 or something, a little bit inspired by the TV series, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Mm -hmm. I'm always a bit embarrassed, but like, hey, it's, it's fiction, whatever. I was 21. No vampires in my books, though. Okay it's very different but in any case so I still didn't have a story I had this idea for some kind of framework to follow a young woman as she evolves in her life while having special powers so that's the only connection there with the tv show but the real writing started in 2017 when I attended the forensic psychiatry conference in uh, Prague in, mm. uh, in Prague Czech Republic somehow on the flight back suddenly like everything just started to come together like almost like a puzzle it was like amazing very very interesting amazing strange experience I basically had basically the full outline of book one mm. all those ideas from like everything who I am my background like people I know like you know all the, again, forensic psychiatry about psychopaths, like narcissism, all sorts of things like that. Everything just started to connect and form into more interesting characters and the action started to happen in my head. So I had the outline by the time I arrived back to Montreal, I had like basically the, the full story. Mm -hmm. And that's, it just continued for the next three years. So until about, well, until pretty much the pandemic, I kind of kept writing. So it's a series of books. It's not just one. Mm -hmm. It is going to follow the same characters. So you are a psychiatrist. So yes. did you have a background in, in writing? What, what made you make that jump from Old doing psychiatry and into publishing a series of books? Yeah. So again, it's, it's, Th th that's the whole story. So psychiatry is something that I discovered in medical school. I never knew I wanted to be a psychiatrist. Obviously, I mean, I was always interested in the in human nature and mm -hmm. things like that. So as soon as I discovered psychiatry on the second day of my med school rotation in psychiatry, literally, I remember walking down the hallway uh, after what at the end of that second day. And I was like, wow, I, I think this is this is the right one. Almost like falling in love. Mm -hmm. Very strange. <laughs> in any case, so that's how psychiatry came about. I have no actual formal education in writing. In fact, English is not my first language. My real background, well, Valenti is a pen name, but my real ethnic background is Eastern European. In fact, Ukrainian. Um, arrived to Canada at age 10. Mm -hmm. So arrived actually to Montreal. So my second language, I suppose, is French. Although right now I am, I, I'm really bilingual in that sense, French, English, you know, whatever, Ukrainian. So English is my third language. Obviously at McGill, I studied uh, in English and subsequently as well. Mm -hmm. I tried to take, of course, I, I did take some writing classes, but literally that came later. The whole decision, there was no decision to write. Like I say, like literally that story like I was always like an imaginative kind of person, like some dabbling in writing occasionally here and there. Not when I was in med school, no mm. time for that. <laughs> uh, not in residency either. So it had died down for quite a while. And then suddenly like this, it just, it just all came together after Prague, after that forensic psychiatry mm -hmm. conference, a fascinating conference, like really and truly, you discover like what psychopathy really is, as horrible, obviously, but uh, very interesting, because they're, uh, 
well, they're sort of they're they're missing a they're missing some normal human functions in their brain, and there are it shows on on scans too. So it's, it's almost like a biological issue. Uh, in any case, it's uh, it's quite fascinating, and it somehow it all interconnected with my long ago kind of idea about those paranormal powers and those sorts of villains, or you know the kind of story about a young woman who uh, has paranormal powers, mm. but also is a doctor. And she goes through the next 10 years of her life having all sorts of interesting adventures, trying to balance work, friends, love, whatever. <laughs> Villains, paranormal creatures, mm. uh, stuff like that. So your book is Sentinel 10, The Edge of Destiny. So I'm interested in hearing how your background as a psychiatrist, how does that inform your characters? Okay. Do you use a lot of your psychiatric background and your background in medicine in your stories? Right. I certainly use it because, frankly, psychiatrists at this point, it's uh, it's part of who I am. I've, some of the reviews, and I've been told that my characters are including like like really good reviews from like Kirkus reviews, a really well-recognized review source uh, for writers. But in, in any case, I have multifaceted characters. They're all flawed, but that, that's a very good thing because they're not cookie cut mm. or anything like they're not stereotypical at all. Certainly, I do take some inspiration from, well, really my knowledge of, let's say, human nature, mm. not only as a psychiatrist, but definitely as a psychiatrist as well. As a psychiatrist, we encounter a, a large variety of all sorts of people which are usually struggling with a lot of problems, even sometimes aside from the mental illness, personality problems. We certainly see narcissism, for instance, occasionally, technically psychopaths, you know, antisocial personality disorder. In any case, so yes, there, there's inspiration there. Sometimes I even I even presented like a, like a supernatural version of like a bipolar illness, let's say, mm -hmm. having a manic episode, but like it's it's because of a, well, it's because of a, like a paranormal thing that happens to the person, their powers go out of control. So they go on this rampage and, and there there's definitely like parallels with having a manic episode. And then they're like, oh my God, what was that? I mean, what happened to me? It's, it's horrible. So yeah, there's definitely inspiration there. And of course, still me as a, as a person also, uh, all sorts of people I've encountered in life outside of psychiatry as well, including some colleagues sometimes, like what not. So <laughs> so do these colleagues know that they're inspiration no, for no, some no, characters no. in the book? Well, camouflage. It, it's not it's not current colleagues, it's like <laughs> from way back, med school, whatever. <laughs> so tell us in terms of the response to your book. I guess from the medical side, what it, do your colleagues know that that you're writing these series? No, I mean I, I don't tell well. <sighs> In, currently, I started to work, like I, I changed places. I was working for six and a half years at a different hospital, a community hospital. Right now, I'm in an academic hospital. So, but after about, I don't know, eventually, I basically told my colleagues, eventually, eventually, even the nurses, because again, inpatient unit, eventually, I, I told them at first, like I was keeping it secret, because again, mm -hmm. I am, by the way, I, I'm certain that I am the only North American psychiatrist writing paranormal fiction. I, I, th there's no way there's another one. <laughs> so it's pretty unusual, or at least I feel it's unusual. So I'm, I'm not sure how people would react to that. I certainly want to remain, you know, professional in their mind. And especially on, on, on top of it, like, what if the patients find out? So I certainly have a, a, a pseudonym for that reason, especially. Um, yeah, you know, psychiatric patients, so you, you never know. You don't want to interact with somebody who's been reading your book or mm. having ideas about it. <laughs> We're talking to Daniela Valenti. She's a psychiatrist and author. Her book is Sentinel 10, The Edge of Destiny. So Daniela, tell us about your future writing endeavors. What do you envision your writing career to, to be in the next year or so? Well, I, I mean, I'm still working on the whole series. I'm actually, it's interesting because it's almost like I write sometimes it's well, okay. The first book I wrote it all together as a like a full story, like in 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 quick in, in succession, basically. Since then, it's been nowadays I'm working on book four is being edited by my editor. Book five, I'm finishing it. Basically, I work on scenes. 
like chapters, let's say. So it's almost like a movie. Apparently movies are being filmed in scenes which are not necessarily consecutive. Well, frankly, that's how it's working for me now. I know the scenes that are missing in each, in, in, in the remaining books. The books are actually written, but they're missing some pieces, some scenes, which I am still working on. And my plan is to well, carry on and have the all 10 books out in the next perhaps two years because they're mostly done. So that's, I, I don't necessarily think I'm going to be writing maybe other books, but you never know. You never know. It, it might hit me again. <laughs> and my final question, Daniela, tell us some of your take home messages I'd like to leave with the Kevin MD audience. So I, I'd like to tell a little bit about, again, I mentioned what the story is mm -hmm. about, but basically it's about an anesthesia resident. Her name is Amanda Griffith and in Boston, in mm -hmm. Boston, in the U.S. And she discovers she has uh, paranormal powers in terms of she can generate basically such psychic impulses, but it's it's not like a psychic, she can't read minds or things like that. She she can project uh, a psychic charge, like a psychic, whatever, power surge out of her hand. And with that, she can destroy things like ghosts or paranormal, some entities like that. And by the way, a lot of my entities are in fact inspired by some almost like science fiction, but like mm -hmm. quantum physics off YouTube, like those kinds of interpretations, dimensions and things like that. Anyway, they're all quite like original takes on existing concepts, like ghosts or demons, whatnot. And additionally, those kinds of charges, pulses, pulse energy can also hurt quite a bit if you're, you know, a psychopath, even if you're not a supernatural mm -hmm. one, it can hurt people. It, it give you a horrible more than a headache, he'll knock you out. So she can fight basically all sorts of criminals. There's secret societies. There are moral dilemmas in there. I mean, this is not a young adult. This is adult. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the books are more romance. Others are more like urban fantasy. So it's, but it's all about her and the kind of, well, she has best friend, how she finds love, the kind of people she interacts with. There are some like, what, but at work, how it can affect her work, because eventually she'll have to quit mm -hmm. anesthesia because it's 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 too much. She can't do both. She'll go to family medicine. In any case, so it's all following Amanda and how her powers are. Well, if she'll have the powers for the next 10 years of her life, so from age 20, 25 until 35, and how her life stages also evolve in conjunction with the powers, having that kind of destiny. The book is Sentinel 10, The Edge of Destiny. Daniela, thank you so much for sharing your perspective and insight. Thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you so much.